Speaking to VOA in his New York apartment, 34-year-old Dmitry Savchenko recalls the prosperous life he once had. In Belarus, we had everything. My wife had several cafes. I had two businesses myself, some real estate, an apartment, a car. All of that was put in jeopardy when the apolitical businessman decided to register as an independent observer for the country's 2020 presidential elections. After chronicling numerous irregularities in his precinct and seeing police attack peaceful protesters following elections that outside observers called undemocratic, Savchenko had enough. I decided that I will bring them to justice, no matter where I am. He sent the incriminating evidence to BIPOL, an independent union of Belarusian ex-security officers who keep a registry of crimes committed by the Lukashenko regime. The state's crackdown drew international condemnation, but Savchenko says authorities continue to methodically target critics in civil society and independent media. Slowly but surely, they got to the people who were election observers. For days, he was harassed, then detained and beaten by the police. He says authorities threatened to send his five-year-old son to an orphanage. We were faced with a dilemma, either go to prison or run and hide in another country. And so they ran, all the way to Mexico City, then to Tijuana, then to the United States, where they are seeking political asylum. Immigration lawyers say there are many others, like the Savchenko family. We have seen a number of these cases and a uh, big increase in the number of cases coming from Belarus specifically. Yehoi spoke with several Belarusian asylum seekers who arrived in the United States from the southern border following the post-election crackdown. They all spoke of intimidation, detainment and beatings by police back home. The U.S. Customs and Border Protection data shows a steady increase in the number of encounters of Belarusian migrants by officers on the southwest border from October of 2020 through September of 2021. Savchenko says the reason he chose the U.S. instead of Europe is safety. There is a network of Russian and Belarusian agents that are active in the country's neighboring Belarus, as well as in some EU states. Belarusian officials forced a civilian Ryanair flight to land in Minsk last year to arrest an opposition blogger. Another exiled Belarusian activist was found hanged in a park near his home in Kiev, an unsolved case widely seen as another victim of Minsk's clandestine services. For the most part, they're probably safe traveling through Europe, but it's not irrational to worry about uh, Russian and Belarusian security services. With Russian troops now massing in Belarus and more on the border of Ukraine, experts see the region's authoritarian leaders becoming more collaborative, putting their critics at greater risk. Since uh, Lukashenko's you know, crackdown in the last year or so, uh, he's going to be looking for more opportunities to assist Putin, and Putin's going to be looking for means to uh, work with the Belarusians on, on, these, on these issues. Dmitry Savchenko is adapting to life on the run. Experts say whether an activist is in danger depends on how high their name is on Belarusian KGB's priorities list. But it's a guessing game no one on the list wants to play. Igor Tikhanenko, VOA News, New York.